Hey everybody, it's Renee from Tailspin Farm. I am hopping on today for another video. Um, this one has been requested several times and I am finally getting to it. It's one that I talked about doing last year and never got to it. Um, so let's jump in. This isn't going to be a real long video. If you have any questions about what we're going to talk about today, you can just put them down below in the question box or the comment box and I'll be glad to answer them for you. Um, for those of you who are new here, I am a fiber artist. I spin, I knit, I crochet, I raise angora rabbits. Um, I am a spin illusion um, spinning wheel dealer, which is a new endeavor I've taken. Um, Maggie's come to visit with us today, so <laughs> um, so uh, yeah, I am I am able to. <laughs> Um, help you if you have any questions on Spinolution wheels or if you'd like to order one or try one out if you're local to me I am in um, the middle of the Michigan mitt and I would love to help you with that um, we are looking into uh, my husband and I just moved to five acres last year and we are looking into adding some more fiber fiber animals to our farm so stay tuned for that um, but for today we're going to talk about and I apologize there she's gone or she's heading out the bumping you see is the dog trying to get in here um, what we're going to talk about today is um, what can you knit and what shouldn't you knit with angor uh, yarn and so a little bit of information for those of you who are not familiar with Angora. It is a beautiful luxury fiber yarn. Um, it is soft, very, very soft, one of the softest fibers out there. Um, I think the muskox is the number one softest fiber out there. If that still holds true, that's what it used to be. Um, and it is extreme, Angora is extremely warm. It is about seven times warmer than sheep wool. Um, hence why I have never knit a, sweat, a full sweater with it. Um, now I do have a few things here. I have, well, I didn't bring all of my stuff that has Angora in it. I brought some of the stuff to show you structure and things like that, but I do have one of uh, one bigger item that I will show you. Um, so I have never spun and knit or crocheted a sweater. Um, I would be open to that at some point, maybe we'll see, but, um, for now I am happy doing small pieces and making yarn and, um, selling it that way also. So, um, I'm going to show you just a few of the things. I'll start with some of the things that are blended, um, Angora. And actually this is something that I talked about in one of my other videos the things that I don't wear a lot I do keep in Ziploc bags um, I actually have not had a lot of issues with although you will see it on this um, I have not had a lot of issues with um, moths but this does have some this I talked about in one of my videos last week I believe um, and maybe it was on Instagram I can't remember but when I first started spinning um, with Angora, I used a drop spindle. That was my first um, first thing I learned on was a drop spindle. And people asked me if I was able to spin large amounts or um, use that fiber. Do you have to ply drop spindled yarn? There were quite a few questions. And so this, um, I think this is three rabbits. When I first started out, I got two rabbits and then I got one more shortly after that. So I kind of started my my obsession, my passion with just three rabbits. And this is, and yes, I did not take great care of this at one point. I should have, because I wasn't really gonna use it. This was my first ever drop spindled piece. Um, and you can see all the different colors. I had two female and a male rabbit. Um, Mary, Elizabeth, and Matthias were my first three rabbits. And you can see, and I still remember, this is this is Matthias, this is Mary, and this is Elizabeth. You can see their colors in here. And this is all drop spindled, and this is all single plied. And then I crocheted just this sampler um, to have as a reminder of where I started. So that is the first thing I ever drop spindled um, with my Angora. So it is possible to drop spindle Angora. If you have any questions on that, you can um, comment down below or send me 
a direct message on Instagram. Um, my email is tailspinfarm at gmail.com if you have any other questions. I'd be glad to ha answer those for you. Um, so that's how I started. And as I moved along, I moved into things um, more blended. Let's see. And again, this isn't all the stuff I have. You've seen some of my shawls and things that have Angora in them. Um, I didn't bring any of those. So this is a hat that I did, and this is a machine knit hat. I have a, oh, I'm not even going to remember, an Addy um, knitting machine, the Circle the Knitting Machine, and I made this on that. Probably, I'm guessing this is probably easily 15 or more years old. I'm going to say around 15 years. Um, I've had this hat forever, and it is all hand spun. And it, this is actually, and I'm hoping, I think you can kind of see the, the texture and thing. This is an alpaca and angora blend. So even though there's not a lot of, and this has been worn. This was my chore hat up until this year. Um, so this has been worn and washed um, many, many, many times. So you can see the halo from the angora and there's not a ton of Angora in this. Um, probably, I know there's more alpaca than there is Angora. So this does have structure to it. Um, the alpaca puts that, puts that structure in here with the Angora. Because if you, which you're gonna see here in a minute, when you, you're knitting or crocheting with just Angora yarn, there's not a lot of structure to it. There's a lot of drape. And so some um, projects aren't gonna really work well with just straight Angora. So this one is Alpaca Angora Blend um, and has lasted a very long time. I love this hat. Another thing that I made years ago, this is probably, these are also probably 10, 15 years old, are fingerless mittens. And these were some of my first attempts in, oops, I gotta tuck that, in dyeing yarn, dyeing Angora. And I believe this also is um, blended with Alpaca. Um, we had alpacas at one point, and a lot of my stuff is alpaca blend. So, again, these are just crocheted. Um, I don't even think I used a pattern for these. I just put them together. Um, and these ones, um, because of the alpaca, have some, some structure to them. They stay on nicely. So those ones are another one that were a blend. This, this is another one of my machine knit hats with, um, this is Merino, I think. This, this one's probably 10 years old. They do last. Um, the Merino gives it structure. And this is another, I think I just said that, a machine knitted hat that I did um, many years ago. So you can see how the halo, can you, yep, you can see that. Even with just some Angora in the fiber blended, you're gonna get the halo effect from the Angora, which makes it beautiful. You don't have to use a lot. Um, and maybe that will be one of my videos that I make is blending the Angora. Now, on to some pieces that are, yeah, these are all 100% Angora, although I'm not sure about this one. I was digging through. I have one more hat that I really wanted to show you. It was a beautiful pattern. Um, if any of you want to look it up, it was called the Magnolia hat and it had a beautiful flower pattern on the top of the hat that came down. And I knit that with 100% Angora. It's in my closet somewhere. I kind of looked for it. I didn't want to take too long digging for it. Um, it was a beautiful pattern, but it did not work out well for Angora, strictly straight 100% Angora. Um, and I think this one is a blend too. This was just a machine knit. I also had a smaller machine um, knitting machine and Addy the circle and that's what this is and this I believe is a blend of maybe alpaca in about the same it looks to be about the same yarn as this actually or close to it maybe so this also has angora in it and so scarves are great for things that you don't want a lot of structure that you want some drape to scarves are a great thing to do with angora now with some things um, I love these and I wear these but they are um, there's not a lot of if I would have made these ones a little bit longer I think that would have helped too these are shorter ones if I would have made them a little bit longer I think they would have 
felt because Angora is also very slick. It's a very slick fiber. So it, things tend to move very easily on your hand, which you can kind of see there. And so these ones I don't care to wear as much as I like to wear these ones um, because they do slip inside a little bit because there isn't a lot of structure to the Angora. They are beautiful. Um, and again, I think the next time I make a pair of these, I'm gonna make them longer. Another option is to do, this has, I think you can see this has a ribbing cuff here and here. Another option is to blend in something with at least the cuffs to give it some, some structure on that, and then you won't have the slip sliding on the Angora. So those are my other fingerless mittens. These are the 100% Angora, these are the mix, um, blended, and I like these better. Um, this is a knitted, this is a hand knitted hat, um, just a basic um, hat that I hand knit this year. And I stopped short of the pattern, which was a good thing, because this, um, let's see if I can kind of show you with some of the other hats, where this one has some structure to it. You can kind of see this one definitely has some drape to it. And so it tends to slide, it slides down and it will, again, this is, this can easily be solved with putting another strand of something in your, in your brim that you make. You don't even have to take it through the whole um, body of the hat. This one is, it fits better because it is a shorter hat. It's like a beanie. So it's not. The furthest it's going to go is there is because my head is, it's not um, like a uh, slouch hat or anything. So this one is another one. Um, if I remade this, I would probably um, put something in the brim, another yarn, put, not even, it doesn't even have to be handmade. If you found the right color to match with what you were working with, um, I would probably put that into the brim. The other option you could do if you don't wanna do that is just make it a tad bit shorter so it fits perfectly where you want it to fit. Um, and also you could make the ribbing, um, the circumference, you could make that a little bit smaller also so it's tighter to your head and that would make it fit a little bit better also. Um, this is actually a hat that my mother-in-law made for me years ago and I love it, but it's one of those ones that without, this one does, she put a trick in here, so it does work better. But, so this has, you can see she made a brim. This one actually has a tie on it. So if you wanna tie this, whoops, I just undid it. So if you wanna tie it tighter, you can. So this one actually fits a little bit better than my other one. Um, it's almost like a beret type and so once you tie it to the circumference of your head it's not really going anywhere um, so this one almost matches my hair pretty good too. <laughs> so that's another option is to put um, just let's see she just did an uh, like an I cord or uh, actually this might be just a crocheted band right through and she just threaded it through the edge of this hat. You can see it right there. And she went all the way around to create that. And then this would be adjustable then. Um, so I'm gonna tuck that in. So this one would become adjustable. So this one does fit a little bit better also, but you can kind of see what I'm talking about with it not having a lot of structure to it. Um, some of these, you need to do something special to make it work and fit better. Um, one more hat. This is a machine knit hat. And what I found with the Angora that works really well. So this is a super warm hat. Um, and these are the machine knit hats that I'm doing lately. And what I do is I take just a store bought stash buster yarn to do. This is a two layer hat all the way through and I do it on the inside. Well, the way you make these, you make a long um, tube and then you um, bring it together and, and um, connect it at the top. So putting, and this one is actually a slouch hat, so this is really big, but by putting in that um, second layer down there, it 
it holds it together and it works perfectly. I made quite a few of these this year. I really like them. This is a really long one, so I kind of have a slouchy hat, but this gives it structure around that um, brim like I was talking about with some of these other ones that are just one layer. If you chose to put a, a different, um, different yarn in there for at least the brim, then it would give you the structure that you need. This hat with it being double layered and the Angora is super warm. Um, which we haven't needed much this year in Michigan so far. We won't talk about the weather though. Um, and the last thing I wanted to show you, this is a shawl um, that I made. Oh goodness, I don't even know, remember when I made this. I'm gonna guess it was probably 12 years ago, maybe a little bit longer. And I don't even remember what pattern I used. Yep, you can see the detail there. Um, it was some kind of a flower um, pattern. This is crocheted. You could see the flower all through there. And I made this and my dad bought it for my mom. Um, it's 100% Angora and it has beautiful drape, has a beautiful halo. And uh, when she passed away last year, I, I got it back. Um, so I am thankful to have this, but this makes this makes a very warm and remember I have another scarf underneath this but if you want to make anything drapey and and just really um, beautiful to look at Angora is the thing you should use because this makes just a lovely um, as you can see here it drapes perfectly so I'm gonna take this off because it's hot um, so hopefully that gives you some ideas of do's and don'ts and some tricks and tips on if you really want to use 100% Angora, um, go ahead and do that. Just remember to maybe put some things in place, whether it be the tie like on the one hat or the brims, um, the cuffs, put in some extra yarn in there to help you um, have a little bit more structure to your projects. But otherwise, I am a huge fan of Angora. I try to use it as much as possible um, and uh, try to open people's eyes that it can be used for other things. And I hope this helped. I hope this answers some of the questions that I've been having come in lately about using Angora. And again, if you have any more comments you could, or questions, you can put them down below in the comment boxes. Um, you can follow me on Instagram and Facebook. I'm mainly on Instagram right now um, here at the YouTube channel, obviously. Um, I do have an email list where I send out newsletters and upcoming sales and coupons and things like that. So if you'd like to um, join my email list, you can do that by getting on my website at tailspinfarm.com. I'll put all the links down below. Um, and if you like this video, please click the like button and subscribe to my channel. I am continuing to do more and more videos. I will be working um, on some outdoor hutches coming up soon once we flip totally to spring. And, um, and I want to be able to show you that. So uh, click the like button and the subscribe button today so you can get more of these. Um, thanks for stopping by, guys, and I hope you're creating something today.